Ugh, okay. A couple of things before we start. I really wanted to get these recipes out to you before the festive season begins. So you have these to draw from. These are like the easiest recipes, easy for people who have no idea what they're doing in the kitchen. This video is for you. The plant-based bundle is still going on strong until November 27th. So if you're interested in that at all, make sure to check the link down below and let's get into these amazingly easy and delicious and still healthy recipes. So we have so many spaghetti squash. I wanted to do an Italian inspired spaghetti squash and this is gluten free because we're not using pasta. So the first thing you wanna do is cut into your squash, which is very hard. Ugh. Okay, now I'm just gonna scrape out the seeds. Then I'm just gonna use a head of garlic. I'm gonna just chop the top off and I'm gonna roast both of these in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. Just put a parchment paper down. I'm going to put these guys face down. I'm not using any oil. It's really not necessary. And put my garlic face down also. Okay, bye bye. We'll see you when you're golden delicious. I'm going to use about 14 ounces of tomatoes. If you don't have them fresh, you could use diced tomatoes like in a can. A quarter cup of sun dried tomatoes. And then I've got oregano, fennel, crushed red pepper, salt onion powder and garlic powder. I'll give you the measurements in the full recipe. And then we're just gonna blend this up and make a really easy sauce. Okay, so I'm just gonna taste this. Mm, that fennel in there is amazing. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt and that's, that's it <laughs> for the sauce. I'm gonna transfer this to a bowl and then we'll make the ricotta topping. I've got one cup of almonds here half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of salt, or just salt to taste, a tablespoon of lemon juice. I'm gonna add about a half a cup of water. I might need to add more. Let's see how that goes. And we're just gonna blend it until it is smooth. And so that's vegan ricotta. If you don't wanna have the little brown bits from the almonds, then use either slivered almonds or almonds that have been peeled, but it doesn't bother me. It's a nice consistency. Taste it, add a little bit more salt if you want, but we're done. Okay, so the spaghetti squash is done. Ah, oh, beautiful. I'm gonna let these cool for a little bit because they're really hot and I don't wanna burn my hands. So now you're just going to either peel or smush out the garlic cloves. Um, and we're just gonna take them with our hands and put them into the spaghetti squash. And then just flip these guys over. I'm gonna take my garlic and just, you can either chop it roughly or just add it here and there, depending on how chunky you like it. I always like to find garlic inside. It feels like a surprise to me. <laughs> then I'm gonna just take half of my sauce that we made before and put it right into the boat of the spaghetti squash. And just make sure this is even. And pop this back in the oven at the same temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, that looks so lovely and bubbly. Okay, beautiful. Now I'm just going to plop a little bit of this ricotta cheese in here. And when you eat it, you can mix it all around, pull out the spaghetti squash, and it's gonna be so delicious. And another plop there and here. And I've chopped up a little bit of basil here. I'm just gonna put some nice fresh basil on top. And some freshly cracked black pepper on top. Oh man, this smells so good. So, so good. So now we eat and with spaghetti squash, you're just gonna, you know, peel the squash out. So as you peel, then you can just start to mix everything together and it makes it really nice and saucy instead of a dried squash that you might think you're getting. And look at those pieces of roasted garlic. Oh my gosh, I'm salivating. I'm actually salivating. That is good. It's like you made a lasagna without having to do the hassle of making lasagna. Wow, that's good. The fennel. I know the spice. <laughs> mm. Good. Really easy holiday staple, mashed potatoes and gravy, but this has no butter, no added oil. It's from my cookbook, Eating Whole. Super straightforward. Let's get into this super easy side dish that I feel like everybody wants at a holiday. So I've peeled and quartered these potatoes and now I'm just gonna let them cook for 20 minutes. And in the meantime, you can make your gravy and it's really easy. Let's do the gravy. 
I'll dice up some onion, about a half a cup here. And mince two cloves of garlic. And then just dice up half of a carrot. And then I'm gonna thinly slice these mushrooms. You can decide if you wanna blend this gravy at the end or if you wanna have some chunks in there. I like it chunky. Add a little bit of vegetable broth, about a quarter cup. Heat that up. Okay, I'm gonna add in the onion, the carrots, and the garlic, and saute this for about, I don't know, three minutes. Add in the mushrooms, a half a teaspoon of fresh thyme, and let this cook for about five more minutes. I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of either arrowroot powder or cornstarch. Cornstarch, I said that word. Cornstarch, please. Two teaspoons of soy sauce or tamari. One cup of a plant milk of your choice, unsweetened. And half a cup of vegetable broth of your choice. Bring this to a boil and then you're just gonna turn it down and simmer it for about 10 minutes until it's a nice thick consistency. So this is nice and thick. You can taste it, add some more salt or pepper if you'd like, and you can blend this if you want it creamy, but I personally love it chunky. Look how beautiful that is. Oh, yum. When your potatoes are done, just drain them. And then you're just gonna either pour them back in the pot or into a serving bowl. Then you're gonna add about a teaspoon, maybe more salt, and then some fresh thyme. And then just mash this with a manual potato masher. You don't need to add anything here. These taste so good, just like this. I learned how to make these really simple mashed potatoes from my husband. It's very typical Polish, which is where he's from, Poland. And I love them. Oh, this looks delicious. And our potatoes. Mash those up a little bit. Keep in mind, I just ate half of a spaghetti squash, but I'm gonna taste some mashed potatoes and gravy because I feel like there's always room for a little bit of that. A little bit of freshly ground pepper. Let's give this a taste. It smells so good. Mm. Perfectly delicious, oil-free, very healthy. You can totally stay on track with something like this. This is such a hearty comfort meal, crowd-pleasing mashed potato and mushroom gravy. Yum. Yum. Oh yeah. These are really easy to make. This is one cup of dates that has been soaked in water. A cup of either oat flour, almond flour, or coconut flour. I've tried all three of those and they all work. Oat flour would be a better bet if you want to keep it lower in fat. And then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Put it in the food processor and go. You may need to just scrape it down a few times and just keep going till it forms a nice dough consistency. I'm gonna do one more time, I think. That's pretty good. I say that's, that's pretty good. It's soft enough to form into a ball. Melt about a half a cup to three quarter cups of vegan chocolate chips. And then you're going to add in peppermint essential oil, high quality, about two to four drops, and then just stir it to combine. Then roll the balls into whatever size you want, small or big. Once you've rolled all of your dough, then you're gonna pop it into the fridge for about five to 10 minutes. So then we're just gonna take it and dip it into the chocolate so that it's completely covered. And then just slide that beautiful smelling peppermint ball down. And this is optional, but you can add some coarse sea salt. I just think it looks pretty um, and it gives a nice little flavor to it. Totally optional though. And then you can pop them in the freezer if you're gonna have them later or even in the fridge to set for at least like five to 10 minutes. So here is the final product. I made these in a hurry, so they look a little bit messy, but honestly, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter. They taste fantastic. Let's try one. They smell so good and pepperminty. Mm. You know what this reminds me of? I don't know if you've ever had the chocolate called After Eights. I feel like I have chocolate all over my teeth. <laughs> um, but they're really, really reminiscent of that. Completely cruelty-free, dairy-free, and very, very delicious. You can make this and you're gonna love it. Check the description for more on the plant-based bundle, which is going on until November 27th. I will see you guys in a video very soon. Thanks for watching. Mwah. Be well.